Recorded live at Esto in Savannah, Georgia, this is Brand USA Talks Travel. Esto is the nation's premier annual educational and marketing event for destination marketing professionals. We've brought the podcast to Esto to keep you current with new trends and tools in the travel industry. Here's your host, Mark Lapidus. Favorite TV show or movie that features the destination as the backdrop for the story? I got to go with Dirty Harry in San Francisco. <laughs> love it. I would have to say I love that Dumb and Dumber was in Salt Lake, but <laughs> it doesn't feature Salt Lake as much. So I think I'd have to say When Harry Met Sally, New York. I don't usually start the podcast congratulating my guests, but in this case, I'm going to make a big exception because both of the voices that you just heard actually won Go USA TV Storytelling Awards. There is a third voice that's missing in action, the gentleman from the Virgin Islands. He had another appointment. His name is Joseph uh, Bo Schulte. He's the U.S. Virgin Islands Commissioner, and he had something else he had to do today. But I'm very pleased to welcome Vice President of Marketing and Business Development at Visit Denver, Justin Bressler, and Chief Brand and Marketing Officer at Visit Salt Lake, Tyler Gosnell. Welcome to Brand USA Talks Travel. Thank you. Thank you. Justin, you won the award for best storytelling from the city for your series, Base Camp Denver. And it showcases Denver's blend of urban and outdoor experiences. First of all, how did you pick them? Well, the great thing about Denver and Colorado is that we're like a four season destination, but we have real strong product, especially in the summer, of course. And then, you know, Colorado has great product in the winter. And so what we decided to do is come up with a format based on this strategy that we call play in the mountains, but stay in the city. And the whole premise is that you can have a fully fledged Colorado vacation within two hours of Denver, but come back that night and have a great meal in one of our chef owned restaurants, stay in one of our nice hotels so you can fish, hike, bike, raft in the summer and in the winter. There's a lot of close in resorts. Uh, A couple hours, you can go snowshoeing, you can go snowmobiling, you can go dog sledding, you can ski and still come back to Denver that night. And so it's been a real great way for us to embrace everything that people love about Colorado, but really focus that trip in the city. So you've got a lot of constituents. How do you keep them all happy? There are obviously places you don't go. How do you deal with that? Right. We can't cover everyone, but everyone benefits because when we bring the business into the city, they're going to make their way to all of our partners. That's a good answer. I like that. I may reuse it. Is that true for you too, Tyler? Absolutely. We want to continue to share the value of tourism and work with a wide spectrum of our partners across the destination. And ultimately, they will start to see the returns that the tourism provides. Tyler, you won the award for diverse perspective perspectives from Go USA TV. Walk me through the production of that. Absolutely. Our series, the Salt of the Earth series, features unique individualists within our destination that really make up the fabric of what Salt Lake is all about. The creative energy, the amazing outdoor recreation, and the vibrancy that having a major city right at the doorstep of some incredible outdoor experiences is really what we want to focus on. And highlighting diverse experiences is a key factor and something that's very important in our marketing messaging to represent all visitors. And it's a way for us to tell the stories of those who may not be as well represented in other areas throughout the community. And this is something telling the story from Liz Lampson, who runs a Black History Museum, to Wasatch Adaptive Sports, which focuses on creating winter sports activities for those that are physically challenged. And so it's a way to create a unique harmony between the outdoor activities that we have and the vibrant urban destination. I'd like both of you to walk me through the process in terms of how long it took you to make the pieces. We did them in two separate productions because we did the summer ones during the summer and the winter ones during the winter. And we did a lot of internal strategy work first to nail down what we felt the product was, this whole base camp product. And then we picked our activities very deliberately because Denver is really known as a place for light adventure. You can do all the hardcore stuff, but for the millions of people that are not endurance athletes or real adrenaline junkies, you can still do a lot. So we wanted to make sure that we were showing things that were accessible to everyone. And we engaged a great production company, a group called Inkwell that since has been bought out by Outside Magazine. And they had a really deep bench. They know how to shoot outdoor content, but they have a very deep bench in sort of specialty influencers. And so every episode followed the same format of activity in the mountain and an activity in the city, but all of them were kind of hosted in a way 
by these specialty influencers. One was a professional fly fishing guide, one was a world champion rock climber, and one was a local street artist who's also an amateur mountain biker. And they were really the guides for the talent. And the production kind of coalesced around those stories with our team really providing the destination expertise and then the production team just making them gorgeous. And then we also collaborated on the marketing using these influencers. The promotion for these videos was exclusively through paid social media channels. So we ran ads on Facebook and Instagram, and then we turned around to the influencers, paid them an additional fee, and we were able to get access to their paid social platforms. And so Maddie Brenneman, the fly fisher, she let us white label ads through her platform. We paid her, we put some additional money through that platform. And that's what got us from like a few thousand views to a few million views because between Facebook, Instagram, and like some of the Facebook extension networks, you can just get amazing exposure with a really reasonable investment. I'm curious about your watch times. I find that when we run things on social media, the watch times are also smaller. The smaller the screen, usually the smaller the watch time. I mean, you put out great content, people are going to watch it, but we didn't take it for granted. And we also produced some shorter versions of it, some 60 second versions and some 30 second versions. Then we also did some sizzle cuts for strict like, hey, if you like this little sizzle cut, go and see the full length video. Makes total sense to me. You do the same thing, Tyler, or something different? It's a great point. This is a medium storytelling format that we submitted for this contest. And we want to make sure that we're telling the full story and the breadth of that experience of, of the individuals of this content series. But we want to make sure that we're cutting the content down and into sizzle reels for Instagram and TikTok. And that's a really interesting approach that you're taking working with influencers directly to help amplify the content. That's something where we've typically amplified through paid social, also through just driving traffic to our website and featuring it as hero content across our website as we want people who are entering our website to have a deeper engagement with the storytelling surrounding Salt Lake, whether it's something related to an outdoor experience, whether it's related to our dining network. We want people to have that opportunity to seek and learn more when they're visiting our website and our digital properties and having paid promotion is, is a part of that strategy. But we see this as really tier two content where it's never going to be the hero tier one video that we're producing and putting a lot of paid media spend behind. Well, you're bringing up a great point because there is such a difference between advertising and content marketing, right? And I think that's often misunderstood. Well, I think that their lines are getting blurred, though. I want a lot of paid editorial style content in the marketplace because I think it's just another way to express our brand. And the social platforms, to go back to my earlier example, are built for ingesting that kind of content, but they're also built for with a reasonable investment. You can really have a lot of reach. And then, you know, we took it one step further. We worked with the influencers to do a longer cycle that was about 18 months. So we had a couple bites of the apple for each season. So we did summer one year, we went back to the same influencers as summer was ramping up the next year, gave them a little bit more money, put some more media through their channels. And then we were able to cover two different winter seasons as well. Then we licensed the footage. We have five year licensing deals for all the talent. We cut it up into B-roll clips. We absorb it into our library. So the idea of, you know, content and advertising, that stuff that I shot for long form content now becomes a great clip in my 30 second spot. And so we're kind of shoot it once, use it 10 times. That's a great way to get a lot of efficiency out of our production. I actually just have a question for you, Justin, uh, just related to the series for which you won the award. Is there a life cycle to that series? As I was just mentioning, Salt of the Earth is a series that we've had for the last several years. It's something I see us continuing, and we are looking at launching a couple of other content series. One that would be a Salt Lake 60 series that is shorter form, made for social, but continuing to tell those medium form length stories through Salt of the Earth. Do you guys think about your content series and that having a life cycle, having a shelf life, is this Will you continue it indefinitely? I think the content is largely evergreen because the product is, you know, we can always use it for other forms, but it has a shelf life only because video technology continues to improve. And you can sniff out the footage that was shot a couple years before, like the last generation of equipment and resolution. Although I kind of tell you when the storytelling is great, sometimes it doesn't matter. You know, so for example, we run a bunch of shows from Anthony Bourdain on Go USA TV. And when you look at him, you go, ugh, it's really not shot very well, or the color's off, or something like that. And you go, but it's still compelling because Anthony Bourdain is compelling, right? 
But I also, you know, then you say that the just new stories to tell. I think you said you have 25 episodes out there. I've got six. I got my work cut out for me to get this base camp storytelling going. And we will. Maybe not everything's going to be long form again. Some of these are three and a half, four minutes long. I think there's a way to tell really impactful stories, but maybe in a shorter timeline. Well, one of the things we do with Go USA TV is also stitch things together. So even though sometimes we'll make two minute pieces, like right now, we're making a series with the BBC that are really essentially two minute pieces, but we string them together so you have a 15 to 30 minute television show and you'll be in that many cities. You know, so that is definitely one way to do it. The advantage of that is that it keeps the pace moving. You get that velocity with the show because you're seeing so much in the same period of time that you would with an ordinary television show. I find that that works. You guys might be interested in hearing that the watch time on Go USA TV is in excess for the most part of over 25 minutes. So this is the big difference between television and social media. You know, obviously the bigger the screen is what we found, the longer the watch times. And I want to take this opportunity to make the plug for all DMOs that are listening that just like these guys actually donated their television shows to Go USA TV. And we're running them around the world right now in over 48 countries and a bunch of platforms, including smart televisions all over the world. We're game to receive shows from everyone listening to this podcast. We reserve the right, actually, because because sometimes we will receive commercials rather than television shows, and sometimes we do have to turn them down because we're not running commercials for DMOs, right? Big difference. Tyler, do you have a separate content marketing budget as opposed to your advertising budget, or is it the same thing? Yes, we have a separate content budget for content production that includes video, that includes blogs, photography, that is separate from our paid advertising budget. We do have a social budget that is a component of the advertising budget that is largely budget that we're putting behind the content that we're developing, but we feel it's important to keep those separate and to identify those streams. Is it harder to convince people one way or the other how the budget divides in terms of either marketing or content marketing? That's a good question. I think that we always want to make sure that we're achieving our top line goals. So that's driving additional incremental room nights to our destination. That's going to be driving a certain level of awareness. And we'll typically balance our key objectives and the associated goals to make sure that the investments that we are making are defensible. And uh, we have a good balance where we try to look at the total percentage of what are we spending on creative, what are we spending on content as opposed to paid media, trying to have really 70 plus percent of the total budget going towards paid media. Speaking of time, I believe we're out of it. So thank you so much for dropping by, gentlemen, Vice President of Marketing and Business Development at Visit Denver, Justin Bressler, and Chief Brand and Marketing Officer at Visit Salt Lake, Tyler Gosnell. Also, congratulations to the third entity that won an award from Go USA TV, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Commissioner Joseph Bolschulte. Before we go, I want to remind our listeners that we're always looking for new content for Go USA TV. So if you have something you'd like to submit, get in touch with us. We're happy to take a look at it, and perhaps you will win an award for your destination next year at Esto. That's it for Brand USA Talks Travel Live from Esto at Savannah, Georgia. I'm Mark Lapidus. Thanks for listening. Engineering, Brian Watkins. Production and music from Asher Mirovich. If you enjoyed this Live from Esto episode, please share it with your friends in the travel industry. Safe travels.